I've been using while I've been sewing. So the first one that I want to share with you is how I gather on my baby lock serger, which is the Imagine. So I will show you what I did and how it works. Okay, so this is my um, baby lock serger. And I don't know if you can tell in the back, I'll show you. I have um, two different thread colors in the needle thread, which are gonna be the threads that are um, on the far left and the far right. So those are the two needle threads and then the other two colors are darker. Okay, and that's important because when you get ready to pull your loose threads, that way you can adjust the gathering stitches if they're too tight or if they're too loose. You can, you know, kind of play with the threads to get them where you want them to be. So in order to set the machine up to gather, you want to make sure your stitch selector, I don't know what this looks like on the inside. I hope it's not too dirty, <laughs> but make sure your stitch selector is on A, which is for wide overlock stitches. Next, you want to make sure that your differential feed, which is right here, make sure that it is all the way up to the number two. After that, you want to change your bottom stitch length dial, which is right here. You wanna put that on four for standard. So if you'll notice, there's a standard setting here and then there's a roll hem. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. So it says standard and then it also says rolled hem. So you want to make sure it's on the um, standard setting. Turn it all the way around. Oops, have to go this way. And put it on the number four. Okay, so then next. For the top dial, I don't change my top dial. My top dial is set to 3.0 at the moment. And that is just where I leave it. So that would be this dial right here. I just leave it on 3.0. Okay, so um, that is it for the settings. And then I will go ahead and do a couple of stitches just to show you what the gathering looks like. Okay, so now that the machine is set up properly, I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to go ahead and do a test stitch. And there you have it. So you can see how nice it gathers. It does have a very small um, seam, I guess you could say, but it still works. And so what you would do is you would take your two needle threads, which in, oops, sorry, you can't see. So what you would do is you would take your two needle threads, which in my case happen to be the two light colored threads, and you can go ahead and pull on those. Let's see if I can get this going. You can pull on them and you don't want to touch the threads that are in your loopers, but the needle thread, you can pull them and then you can adjust your gathers as you need to. So, yeah. But yeah, I think you get the idea, but you can use your serger to go ahead and um, gather your fabric and attach it to your second piece if you need to, or if not, then you just have a nice little gathered piece of um, fabric. So yeah, there you go. Now, if you don't have a Baby Lock Imagine, I am going to tell you what I did, and then maybe you can use some of these buttons and dials to adjust your serger to hopefully get some of the same results. So if you have a stitch selector on your um, serger, I just put mine on the wide overlock stitches, which happens to be the letter A on my machine. For the differential feed, I set it to the highest setting so that it's not real tight, but it's very loose. So I put that all the way up to, to the top for my serger. Then for the uh, stitch length dial, I made sure that that was on four on a standard setting. And then I didn't really touch my uh, stitch width. Mine happened to be set at a 3.0 and that is what it was okay 
being at so it worked out just fine at the 3.0 so if you can make these adjustments to your serger then hopefully you can also get a um, couple of gathering stitches okay so the next product that I want to share with you are these table risers that I purchased from Amazon and I purchased them um, although I purchased them from Amazon they came from liftyourtable.com I have a cutting table that I purchased from Walmart and it's just one of the tables that folds out so you can fold it up or you can fold it down and um, I noticed that the table was a little bit low when I'm standing up so if I'm standing up and I'm cutting I noticed that I was bending over a lot and it wasn't very comfortable so I decided you know what I want to find something to raise my table and so that's why I purchased these legs there are four of them but I have two of them already on the table so what I will do is show you how I put these on the table and then I will also show you how how high the table becomes once these legs are placed on the table all right I'll be right back okay so I want to show you that the risers are not hard to put on you actually just kind of slip them over the leg and they don't go all the way down to the bottom. The um, legs are kind of bowled outward and that's exactly how you want them to be for these. And so you just slide one on each leg and then when you flip the table over, it will be high enough and you'll have um, some additional height to work with. Okay, so this is what my sewing table looks like with the risers on. And here's a little close up view of what the risers actually look like once they're on. And I will stand behind the table just so you get a better idea of just how high it actually comes up. So this is me standing behind my table. So it is really a nice height. Um, so whenever, if I stand up and I'm cutting something, you know, I have plenty of room to um, be comfortable and I'm not straining my back. And then I also have a little stool or chair shock. So I will show you what it looks like if I'm sitting down at my table. Okay, so this is the little stool that I, I'm going to use just for demonstration purposes. So if I have a little stool here and I'm sitting down, it's high, but it's still an okay height for me to be able to cut out patterns and do whatever I wanna do at the table. But to be honest, I usually just stand up because I find that I can get it done a little faster and I can move around and just, you know, kind of cut things out. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like if you're sitting down. And by the way, I'm 5'4", so if you're taller, then you know you'll have different results. And also, if you're shorter, you will have different results as well. So yes, that is my table and I like it. I like it a lot better now that I have these risers on there. All right. Okay, so this is me sitting at my sewing table before the risers were added. Okay, so the next um, item that I like to share with you is that I have recently been using clear tape or also known as invisible, not tape, thread. Clear thread, invisible thread, or monofilament thread. It's called all of those things, but it's just this one same product. And it's a really, really thin um, thread and it looks like a wire mine is kind of tangled up but it looks like a fishing line i don't know if you'll be able to see that but it's very thin and i have used this to stitch in the ditch but this thread is really good to use when you don't want your stitches to show for whatever reason that may be so i could probably see maybe using this to sew in some labels um I know some people use this when they are sewing applique down um, onto another piece of fabric um, and I like it. It's been really useful for me. Speaking of sewing down labels, I don't have any labels that I put inside of my garments. What I typically do if I have something and I can't tell the front from the back, I will sew a button in the back. So I have a jar full of buttons. I'll grab one and just sew it in the back and that way I'll know which is the back and which is the front. Next thing that I want to share with you is called a hemostat. This is actually like a medical device, but 
What I did the other day, I was sewing something and I had to make some straps and I had to turn the straps inside out and I was having a hard time actually because I made the mistake of sewing the um, seam a little too close and so I had a hard time getting in there to pull the um, fabric into the right side. So what I decided to do at the last minute, I was like, I need something to grip for me. And that's exactly what this did. So I was able to just grab the fabric and it has these little, I don't know, grooves I guess in here. And you can actually hold them together. Once you squeeze it together, it will actually lock in place. And so the grip is really nice and firm. And so what I did was I reached inside the little hole. It was like a little hole and the, the strap was hanging down on this side and then I had the hemostat in the middle and I was pulling this way while I pulled on that way. But this helped it, you know, to come out a little easier. So I was like, oh wow. And that was just something I just thought of at the last minute because I was super frustrated, but it worked. Okay, so I shared in one of my previous videos how um, I am going to start changing my needles a little more often. And Schmetz is the name of the needle company or the company that makes needles. And those are the needles that I usually purchase. But what I failed to mention in that video is that Schmetz actually has an app and I have it downloaded on my phone. So this is the app, it looks kind of like that. And it's really nice because when inside the app, it shows you needle color coding. So it shows you which needle you should use when you're sewing. And then another thing that I like about it is it tells you the needle, the, the different needle types. And so you can see which needle works best with which um, fabric type. Okay, so the next product that I want to share with you is this tracing paper that I purchased again on Amazon. I'm not sure how to pronounce the name, but it looks like Bien Fang. And um, it's really thin, which I like, but it's not too thin that it rips. But what I really like is that you can see through it. So if you want to place a pattern under it, you can you know, just trace right on top of it and then you'll be able to see exactly um, what lines you need and you'll be able to make your adjustments um, while looking through the paper. And the dimensions that I purchased was 20 by 24. So um, yeah, it comes in different sizes or lengths. I also read that you can buy this at an art supply store. So if you have something like, for example, Blick, I think B-L-I-C-K, um, I know they have stores in other states, so you may be able to get it there also. And speaking of tracing paper, one other thing that I wanted to mention is um, removable tape. So this is a tape that you can purchase like at Staples or something like that. And it's really nice because you can use this on patterns and you can use it on thin paper and it won't rip the paper when you rip it off. So that's really helpful because if you're making adjustments and you need to just take the paper off and move things around, you can just take it off and it won't rip the paper or it shouldn't. Yes, that is um, the last product that I wanted to share with you today. So, um, before I go, I want to leave you with a love share. The love share that I have for today is to compete in the Miss America pageant, contestants cannot be married, previously married, divorced, or have any children. Yeah, so that is all that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.